So on today's lecture, we will continue uh, some basic uh, uh, definitions and basic uh, <laughs> concepts uh, of a point processes. So uh, today we will talk about how we can uh, define a distribution of a Poisson uh, of a point process, and uh, we will consider a statement that will show us how we can uh, guarantee that, that two processes have same distribution. So at first, let me recall uh, what uh, have we uh, done or when we have a deal with just one random variable. So for uh, a random variable psi, for example, if we consider it on probability space of a such form, uh, what do we have? So psi is a random mapping from, oh, oh I'm sorry, uh, psi is a mapping from a probability space into R and it is uh, measurable. And to talk about its distribution, we now consider the measure not on the probability space, but we define a probability measure on real line. Yes, so we talk about the distribution of distribution of psi, we define as is the measure on R. And we define it like uh, new uh, measure P of psi that on some subsets of R, so I take a borel subset of real line, then I can define this measure like just the probability that psi belongs to A. So this we call the distribution of random variable. So in the same way, we can define the distribution of a point process. So this is very easy idea. Uh, so let's come back for the for a point a process, and I recall that a point process point process now uh, we consider it as a random element in a space of uh, measures. So it now is a uh, measurable mapping from omega into the, oh, I'll recall the notation n. So this is a space of measures mu that can be represented as sum of uh, measures mu k from n where uh, mu k is such a measure that uh, on every uh, subset of, of the space, it has integer values or zero. Yes, so we can see the such definition for our space of measures. So here, k from one to n and b. So now I consider the space where our point process leaf is just x. So this is our b is the subset of this space x from some sigma algebra. So process I will write here on space 
x with measurable structure. Okay, so uh, this is uh, where the process lives, and we define here uh, just a simple sigma algebra. I will recall that, that we consider smaller sigma algebra on the space of such measures of the following form that we consider all mu that all mu of some subs, uh, subset is equal to fixed k and here b from x and k some integer number. So we consider such a process and like we did in our basic probability the course, we can define the distribution of a point process. So this is a, we can give the definition that the distribution of a point process, point process eta is a measure now, uh, probabilistic measure. Now this is measure on the space of measures. So on this space oh. and such that it is equal to probability measure. Let me write the notation for it. Uh, P eta such that P eta of some subset. A is equal just probability that uh, our measure belongs to A. A now get belongs to all this sigma field. Uh, N. Okay, so this definition we can give, and this is very simple, but uh, to work with this definition, uh, it is rather complicated. So uh, what is the, uh, so if I want to uh, compare two point processes, I should take all uh, subsets in sigma field and uh, check the quality of such uh, probability. So this is uh, not uh, very convenient. So we should understand how we can uh, guarantee that two point processes are equal. So this means how we can uh, compare them. And uh, we will see the more simple tool uh, that uh, can do this procedure more easier. And uh, to this aim, let us recall what have we done for uh, random processes. Because for random processes, we also have rather complicated structure, but we know how to guarantee that, that two processes have same di distribution. Yes, and what are the, the, the tools? So first of them is uh, that we call uh, fi uh, finite dimensional distributions of a process. So let us recall that uh, if we have just random process, we can consider not its distribution in the space of all mappings from or just from R to R, uh, but we use uh, finite dim the dimensional distribution. So what is it? Dimensional distributions. So, of 
the process. So that I denoted with Xi of T. So I have a mapping from that from the negative numbers to R. And uh, we can see the a family of the following probabilities. So for every n, I fix moments of time t1, t2, and so on, or tn. And I consider uh, subsets uh, b1, bn of real line. And I consider all probabilities of the following form that psi of t1 belongs to b1, and so on, psi of tn belongs to bn. And uh, from theory of random processes, we know that all such family, so all this family for where we can vary n, uh, t, and subsets, we can uniquely define a process. Yes, and if we want to check that some, pro some process psi is equal to process or eta, we will check the equality of its fi uh, fi uh, fi uh, finite dimensional distributions. Now let us think what can be analog for a point process here. For point process. So a point process now is a random measure. So we can, if we have on the one hand side, I have a process that depends on time. But if I have a, a point process, so let me write here, a point process, point process, and here will be my uh, random. So for point process, point process, for point process, we have random measures. So it depends on subsets where B belongs to some C oh, algebra on a space. So I have space and here uh, we have some points. So if I have here the oh, moments of time, T1, T2, and so on, Tn, so here I will have not times, but I will index the uh, so-called uh, finite dimensional distribution with this subset B, uh, B1, B2, and so on, Bn. So here we can see that if for a random the process we uh, indexed here a finite dimensional distribution with time here with subsets. So this is rather uh, strict analogy. Uh, okay, so uh, and this will and how we can define so-called finite dimensional distribution. So if here we consider that the probability of C of T1 is belongs to, maybe I shall not use here the same B. Uh, let me write here delta, for example. that belongs to delta one and so on C of uh, T and belongs to delta two or uh, N. Uh, this we will have as 
analog uh, the following kind of probability that probability that a point a process of b1 and here we know that the value of point process is some integer numbers so actually i can just write here k1 for example eta of bn is equal to kn so if i will consider all k1 and kn to be integer numbers or such probability will as we suppose they will define the, the distribution of a point process okay so this is just an intuition and and later we will, we will give the uh, strict uh, a proposition that will prove that indeed uh, such um, so-called finite dimensional distributions of a point process will define the, the distribution of a point process like we define in the beginning of the lecture. And also, let us mention another uh, tool that we use in the theory of random processes and in a probability theory, this is a characteristic functions. Characteristic functions. So let's right here for a random process. So what is it? So to define a characteristic function of a random process, again, I fix some natural number n, I fix moments of time t1 and so on tn, and I consider, let me denote, oh, phi of a vector psi of t1, uh, psi of tn as a function of some lambda, lambda 1, lambda n. So what is this by the definition? So we recall that this is expectation of exponent. Here we have i and here the sum psi of tk multiplied by lambda k. Tk from one to n. So this is a function of uh, lambdas, and we know that a characteristic function will uh, you will uniquely determine the distribution of this uh, random vector uh, q of t one, q of uh, t n, and uh, since we told that. Uh, all such uh, finite dimensional just, uh, vectors will define the random process. So this means that if I will know all such uh, characteristic functions for all uh, n and t, then I will know the distribution of the random process psi. So now let us come back to a point process. What uh, what can be analog of a characteristic function? A four point process. So as before, uh, instead of uh, time for a point process, we use uh, different subsets. So I fix n, I fix some b1, bn will be subsets of our space where a point a process leave. And I can consider the same characteristic function of random vector b1 and so on, eta of bn. But now let us recall that the value of these random variables uh, are non-negative. 
So that's uh, not negative and have uh, natural uh, numbers. So um, this means that actually I can consider not the uh, such uh, uh, exponent of uh, of uh, a complex uh, number, but I can consider. Let us write here. Number one. And I can consider a uh, exponent exponent and here I will write minus uh, and here just some lambda k multiplied by eta of k. So why uh, I don't use here uh, such a a complex exponent. So here we use a complex exponent to be sure that uh, this expectation is fi is finite for every parameter that occurs here. But if I know that my uh, value here is not negative. So I, I will consider lambda one and so on, lambda n, non-negative two. Then uh, this value is uh, less than zero, so exponent is less than one, so I can guarantee that the expectation exists and uh, finite. Sorry, lambdas are strictly positive or non-negative? No negative. No negative. It's written strictly positive, if, if I understand correctly. Let's take, yes, let's take no, uh, no negative. Thank you. Uh, we can take them like that. Uh, so, in this case, I uh, can be sure that, that the expectation exists and oh, Actually, this is the definition of uh, characteristic uh, functional, but we can slightly modify it. So let us see on this uh, sum. It can be written in form of integral. Yes, because here we have a and measure, so I can write it like the integral of some function f uh, t eta, where f is of the form lambda k indicator dk, one to n. So this uh, gives us the idea that we can consider a characteristic a functional of a point process, not, not like a function of some numbers here, but, but we can get any uh, non-negative function f. And this will be the definition. So let us write it. Definition of uh, characteristic uh, functional Or sometimes it calls uh, Laplace because that you can see here Laplace a transform characteristic functional of a point process of point process. Eta on space X is the uh, mapping, let me write it, the formula uh, eta, uh, L eta of 
I will write u here. This is by definition the expectation of exponent of minus integral u x eta dx, where uh, u u is a um, function defined on x into r plus, so that this is just r plus half line. Okay, so uh, this is this uh, is uh, definition of a characteristic uh, uh, functional, and now we understand its motivation. So this is like a strictly uh, strict analog of a characteristic uh, function of a random vector or of a random process here. Uh, so uh, we have uh, this uh, two tools to investigate the, di the distribution of uh, point process. And uh, now let us see that uh, they define a process uniquely. So for this, for this, um, but maybe before that, let us consider some example. To, uh, to uh, see how we can calculate, for example, um, characteristic functional for a process that we already know. Uh, let's consider example. Example. So on the previous le uh, lecture, we considered a so-called binomial point process. Point process. So I will re recall that that we uh, built it as following: we take the independent, ident identically distributed random uh, elements. Random elements, so we can consider. Okay, let's consider R D. So it's uh, I D random vectors are with distribution distribution Q. So we have. Uh, Random vectors. Uh, let me show a picture. So we have some points, and we define the uh, measure eta like sum of delta measures at points uh, x k, and we prove that this is indeed a, a point process, and uh, we found the so the, the probability that at some subset we have exactly m points. Uh, so let us uh, find the characteristic functional of this uh, binomial point process. So uh, for this, let us fix uh, a function. U, so now it acts from if I consider here RD on RD and it is non negative, it has non negative values. Then Laplace functional of this point process at function U is the expectation, so I will write the definition first, minus integral u of x dx. And we discussed uh, last time that this 
integral for such a process very simple. We have just not the integral, but we have a sum. Expectation minus sum u of x k k from one to and now I believe this is easy to calculate. We have uh, independent random variables here. And this is uh, just our product, k from one to n, expectations, because we have independency here, expectation e minus u of x k. And moreover, they are identically distributed. So I, I can write them as, and I know the distribution of uh, xk. So I can write this expectation like e here minus u of x, and here's the, the distribution of q, qx here, if you consider rd this rd into the power n. So as we see, we have uh, some uh, function in terms of uh, this non-negative uh, function u and uh, distribution of each point. Here q is a distribution of each point that uh, form a point process. Okay, so this is like an example of how we can calculate uh, Laplace transform. So now let's try to, uh, to formulate and prove the statement about it or this uh, so-called finite dimensional di distributions and uh, Laplace transform, uh, Laplace functional uh, uniquely define a point process. This is a So let uh, we consider for a point process. Process eta and eta prime on some space x, uh, the following two point processes, the following equivalent. So assume that I have uh, the same distributions of eta and eta prime. So I will use the same notation that just eta is equal to eta prime by distribution. So let us recall that by our first definition of this lecture, this means that if I take uh, any subset of uh, the space of measures of the set of uh, in the sigma algebra of space of measures, then I will have that the probability that eta belongs to this A is equal to probability that eta prime belongs to A. So this is what I mean here. Uh, then how we can use finite dimensional distributions. So we will formulate it as the following. So if I consider the random vector for fixed subsets B1 and so on Bn, so I have a random vector, then it is equal by distribution uh, to the random vector here I will write prime, prime Bn where B uh, here are M, uh, oh, I'm sorry, N is some number, and this subsets B1, B2, and so on, Bn, 
uh, are pairwise uh, disjoint. They are from uh, sigma Silton, uh, sigma Silton uh, space X, and they are pairwise disjoint. Oh, so, uh, and uh, from the theory of uh, random vectors, it's much more easy to work with a random vector than with a random measure. Okay, uh, now the same for, so if I want to try equivalence, now let us write that uh, we suppose that the uh, we will have that the uh, Laplace functionals are equal also they are equal you for all for all functions here u from x to r plus and here uh, we will have one more condition that we can check that for all uh, for all Mm. functions from x to r plus, I will have the equal, equality in distribution of the integrals u of x dx is equal by distribution here, u from x and prime dx. So this is the distribution as a random variables uh, in R plus. So we have a uh, two non-negative random variables and we can talk about uh, its equality in the distributions. So use must be measurable. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Here, uh, here everywhere uh, we consider that this function u, u is uh, measurable from X to R plus, where here we consider a Borel or sigma field. Yes, I I didn't mention it, but we consider such functions. Sure. Send to let me here, of course. Uh, this function here from each this uh, statements U is measurable. Okay, so let's. Prove this statement. Uh, now we understand that it is rather natural. It ha it has strict strict analog from uh, theory of random processes, and we will prove. So we have here four st four statements that we want to prove that they are equivalent so we will prove that uh, from first follows uh, force this will be first step then we will move like this second third force and this will be our plan of proof so let's prove uh, first that from i we can get this one so uh, we know that our process is equal by distributions. And we want to prove that we will have equality of uh, by distribution of such uh, of such random variables. So take uh, take measurable function u from uh, x to r. Plus, and the question uh, is if the if the distribution of the integral u of x dx. So this is a question. Is equal by distribution. So for this, I should 
like just to prove this, this is equivalent uh, if I prove that the probability of that eta, not eta, integral of u of x dx belongs to some subset delta is equivalent, is equal to the same integral, but here the prime belongs to delta. Where delta is a Borel subset of R plus. So let us consider one of uh, such probability. <coughs> so I can rewrite it in terms of the distribution of a point, a process it. And how I can do it, uh, dx belongs to delta. So let me define such a um, function. Define function with g, for example, uh, with index u, because we uh, fix the function u, fix number, uh, and uh, this function g acts from the space of uh, measures into r plus. It just takes a uh, measure mu and gives us the integral mu. Okay, and on the uh, previous lecture, we saw that uh, this is a measurable function, yes, because we have here, uh, this is a random variable, or we just can uh, consider uh, by the definition uh, to consider the step function u, and we'll see that this is measurable for all u. So uh, we have here a random variable, and here now I can uh, rewrite this set. So here I consider all omega such that integral of dx belongs to some tilde. Uh, I can rewrite it as the following that I will consider all. Uh, mu of omega, well, like the random, the, 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 uh, this uh, a measure such that, such that in my notation, this is, I just will write g from u of eta belongs to u, uh, to delta. And this is, just the pre-image, I can write this slide, of u of delta. Yes, so I take, now this is the subset in the space of measures. So this is the idea how I can invert uh, this, set into the set of uh, measures. So from this, I can write that the, my uh, probability that I am interested in, dx belongs to delta, I can just rewrite like the probability that uh, Eta belongs to this subset, g u minus first of, so this is a pre-image of this set. Okay, so this is important that this belongs to our sigma algebra that we defined on the space of 
measures. And since I have the first assumption that I have the equality in distribution for it and it prime, this is equal to this one. And right in the reverse uh, equality, I have the same for integrals here, but with eta prime. So here, uh, how I can write the uh, distribution of the distribution of integrals of uh, with, with, with respect to a point a process uh, as a distribution of a point process of such subset. Okay, so this approves the first step that uh, from first statement uh, follows number four. Now let us approve from four to three. So here is a simple step because we know that the we know that for any function from x uh, to r plus for measurable function, we have equality in distribution of dx is equal by distribution from x the prime dx. So from this follows that, of course, the Laplace uh, transform for non-negative random variables are equal. So this means that if I write exponent minus u from x from x is equal to uh, this is just I apply for the probability theory from which we know that the uh, characteristic the function uniquely determines the random variable. So this step is easy to. So now let us assume that we have uh, that uh, Laplace functionals are equal, and we want to prove. I will recall that you know, for uh, disjoint subsets for all M and for all disjoint subsets B1 and so on Bm, we have that the vectors of such form are equal by distribution. The prime. So how we can do this? Here's a, a simple idea. If I uh, know that Laplace transform are uh, equal for any functions here, uh, I can take just a specific uh, step function u. So take u of x is equal to sum of C K indicator B K of X, so such step function M. Then I will have the equality the equality of uh, Laplace transform for random vectors. Uh, indeed, now the integral for such function has form of the sum. This is the sum of CK eta of BK. And here, uh, please note that here important that we have uh, non uh, we have just joint subsets. So let us recall, because if I take the different key, uh, intercept is equal to zero. This is important here. 
Hutu. Um, and uh, we know that this is equal by uh, short assumptions. This is equal to uh, the same, but with eta prime. So we have the equality of uh, Laplace transform of the random vectors. And again, I apply for a uh, known fact from uh, E theory of, of uh, probability theory that a uh, characteristic uh, uh, function or Laplace transform of non negative well, uh, vectors uniquely determines its uh, distribution. So from this, uh, I have the statement. I will not write it again, this one. So this is statement uh, two. Uh, so finally, what we should do, we should consider, we should prove that this finite dimensional distributions indeed uh, defines the distribution of our point process itself. Okay, so uh, to do this, I will fix with this, uh, fix M and some subsets B1 and so on, BM from uh, Higmolge Brown X, and they are not necessary, not necessary, disjoint. So I want to prove that, okay, they're not disjoint, and oh, I want to prove that the uh, I will have the same uh, distributions for the vectors of uh, this form. Bm is equal to distribution, so this is a question. Because I know only for disjoint, uh, but how I can uh, get from this for, for general uh, subsets. So to do this, let us consider, let us consider uh, probability. We just, uh, we can write these probabilities and we will see that. Uh, sorry, let us, let us uh, make some notation. So if I, I have, uh, I am just to some subsets. I can uh, I can consider uh, disjoint uh, subsets or so-called atoms that uh, atoms of sigma algebra that generated by this B one and so on BM or I just can consider like I can construct them C one is equal to B one C two is equal to C1 without oh, B2 without C1 and so on. C3 is equal to or B3 without C2. So they will be disjoint, just this part. Well, on the picture. Uh, and well, this is not the atoms, but I think it's okay. So uh, then I can consider um, the probability that eta of B1, so on eta of Pm. Let me write so. That it belongs to some Adrian or so let's take some. Mm. I'm not sure that these guys are pairwise disjoint. 
I guess we should subtract everything that was before, not only one step before. Mm, I, yes, 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 maybe, yes, you are. Just to be sure that everything is fine. <laughs> so let us write here. Here C1 and C3 is equal to B3 without C1 and C2. And so, right? C M is equal to M without Thank you. Uh, let us write here. Is equal to K one. Eta of B M is equal to K M. So what I want to do, I want to to write it in the. Uh, probabilities using just uh, C. And uh, how to do this? So if I know that that uh, I can write that uh, vice versa, so I can write that my subset B, um, B with index I, okay, is equal to union of some subsets y is here uh, where y is or uh, y belongs to some subset that depends on this i okay i can write it as follows uh, uh, as union of uh, disjoint subsets and uh, from this i can Right, I can continue this. That here I have the eta of a union of some non disjoint. So here, you are from G1, uh, is equal to K1, and so on. Eta of union of J from index M equal to k m and uh, since these uh, subsets are disjoint i can write them as uh, some as uh, some so i can consider mm -hmm. This probability. Let me write it using the, uh, the the distribution. So I will write the following. This will be the big integral. Uh, and here indicator that uh, sum of some. Let me write uh, here. L. Don't we have an increasing family of? C I mean, G1 is just one, G2 is one and two, and so on. I mean, this union of Cs. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, I... all, all Cs are disjoint, pairwise disjoint, but uh, mm -hmm. we have constructed them in such a way that uh, B1 is just C1, B2 is C1 and C2, and so on, just an increasing union of Cs, of C, Gs. Yes. 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 Probably it will simplify somehow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, the notations, was... nothing more. Just simplify the notations. But of course, it doesn't matter. I'm not sure. Just, I want okay. to say that, uh, yes, if I have here, I know that in some, uh, just, just uh, the union, I have in total uh, K1 points. So I need to consider all possible number of points in. Uh, this subsets. So I denote here just L1, L2, such that in sum I will have K1. Yes, so I just write, maybe this is such not a uh, simple notation, but I consider all possible uh, points uh, that in sum will give me the number of points in the union.
and uh, I'll short again is equal to cup km, and this uh, is in, in L uh, m, and I consider here. So if I write the uh, integral, then this will be the distribution. Uh, so the probability that uh, eta in of c one is equal to uh, l one and so on. C m is equal l n. So I consider all possible uh, number of points in this uh, non intercepted uh, subset C such that they form uh, these numbers K. And uh, since I know that uh, these probabilities, uh, this one, are equal for process eta and eta prime, now this C1 and Cm uh, are disjoint, uh, then I will have the same the equality, the uh, same here if I will write a uh, prime, so eta prime. So I will come back, uh, this is equal to B, so I just add here prime. So we prove that uh, from equality uh, by distribution for such subsets, for such vector where we use uh, non-intercepted subsets, we can get the equality for uh, arbitrary subsets, not uh, not just uh, not necessarily disjoint. Uh, so if we have this, uh, from this follow that we have equality by distribution. Mm. The distribution distribution of eta equal to distribution of eta prime on uh, subsets on the following subsets. So I can consider mu in my uh, set of measures so such that mu from B1 uh, is equal to K1 and so on, mu from Bm is equal to Km. Okay, so, and uh, here is such a, uh, maybe a uh, trick from uh, measure theory. So I will just uh, recall, um, Say it. So we have the equality of distribution on some subset, and uh, we know that uh, these subsets uh, form the sigma field. Yes, we know that our sigma field is generated by subsets of this uh, form, and uh, this. Uh, now, uh, from this, we can uh, see that, and this is so-called a uh, pi system, mm, that uh, these subsets, or uh, let us recall this is uh, C. Uh, so we have uh, sets of this form. And uh, this uh, subset C is uh, form P system. P system is true. So uh, this means that it is uh, closed under intersection. Closed under intersection. So this means that if I take some I'll set A1, A2 in C, then intersection A1 intersect A2 is again of the same form. 
And here uh, we, I will refer to uh, so-called P lambda P system. That if uh, P lambda system, if um, I have the same the equality of measures on a P system that generates the sigma algebra, then I have the equality of distribution that uh, the equality of distribution on whole or sigma algebra. So um, if someone not uh, uh, familiar with this statement, you can find that it's uh, Shreya, for example, in Shreya book uh, chapter uh, two, chapter two, uh, I believe this is paragraph one or, or second, I don't know. So we use this fact and from this uh, follows that uh, we have that equality of the distribution uh, for all uh, for all uh, A, so here, just in sigma algebra and that we consider. Uh, so here maybe the proof is rather technical, but uh, the idea is that we can consider this, uh, the, we can prove the equality by the distribution of uh, such random vectors. And uh, this uh, subset generates a sigma field of the space of measures that we consider. Uh, okay, so we proved that uh, we have the following equivalent uh, statements. And now in the future, in the, in order to prove the equality by distribution, this one, we will use uh, more often just equality of characteristic functionals or this one. It's so uh, just more easy to use and we will see uh, that it is rather useful. We will, uh, we will construct a poison uh, process in several ways. And uh, this one will help us a lot, this statement just to see that the different definitions of a point uh, of a Poisson process as gives the same the same object. Okay, so uh, if you have some some questions you can ask. Okay, if no then